Lord, yes. Oh, yes, the Lord is holy. The Lord is holy. Let's listen to this song for a minute. And then we'll start the service. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That God is holy. Let's watch it then. The Lord is holy. He's the Lord Almighty, the faithful God, the awesome God. Worthy is the Lamb. Hallelujah. Worthy is the Lamb. Worship and praise Him. Oh yes, yeah. say something good to the Lord this morning. The Lord has been good. Hallelujah. The Lord is the Lamb. Oh yes, Father. Hallelujah. Oh yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Worthy is the Lamb, worthy is the Lamb, Lord. The Lord is holy. Jehovah is holy. Thank you, Father, for your message. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. The Word is established. Thank you, Lord. Jehovah is holy, we worship you, Lord. We worship, we glorify your name. Thank you. So may the Lord bless all of us this afternoon. Let's pray. And then we will go into the word of the Lord. Father, we thank you this afternoon for bringing all of us together, Lord, on this platform to worship and to hear your word. We pray for your blessings. Speak through your servant. And let your word be inspired by your Holy Spirit and be given to your people. Let them be blessed, Lord. Give them your life. Let them receive Christ. Let them be strengthened. Those who are sick, we pray for healing for them. Those still in the grip of the evil one, be set free, Lord. Break yokes and chains and set your people free. And help the men who are yet to come into your kingdom to receive Christ Jesus. So this afternoon, we thank you. Bless us in your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So yes, may the Lord bless all of us this afternoon. Today is 26th of July 2020 and uh, we will be having our, our service online again due to the restrictions that we are all being uh, uh, g given by the government. And this afternoon the title is, of our sermon is uh, to overcome distractions, put God's kingdom first in everything. Uh, it's more like a sentence, but I think it will guide us uh, in today's sermon. To overcome distractions, put God's kingdom first in everything. And what does dis uh, distractions do? First, distractions, uh, as we all know, prevent you from concentrating on what is most important in life so when you are distracted you don't really focus you don't do what is most important in life uh, you lose somehow interest to do the right thing you lose the interest the zeal to do what is really right and if you are at the time going through that you realize that when it comes to the time for you to really do what is uh, helpful or, 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 or what will benefit you you don't have the zeal to do that because You've been distracted and you've you spent all your energy resources on things that, if you like, were of a lesser uh, importance. Distraction can also confuse you when you are distracted. It can also make you busy for nothing. So you can be very busy, but without any growth as a believer, without any spiritual growth or any achievement uh, in life, you will only be solving problems you create. When you are distracted, you create more problems and you solve them. And the world we live in is somehow designed. Or it's, it's, it's such that if you are not careful, you'll be distracted by all kinds of things. Especially with the coming of social media, the internet, and how uh, you know information is really uh, in abundance now. If you are not careful, every second you are reading, you are listening to this, watching this, and... 
are people to, for some reason, they don't even wait for, to earn their right to talk or speak. So you, you have all kinds of messages going around. You know, these are all uh, distractions that all of us, uh, we have to um, overcome. And this afternoon, that is uh, our focus and simple. Last week, we looked at how we can overcome worry. And this afternoon, we are looking at how to overcome distractions. It seems uh, to put God's kingdom first is the real solution you know, when it comes to worry and distraction. And this afternoon, we only focus on distraction. So what putting God's kingdom first achieves? Let's look at that. So we are saying that to overcome distractions, put God's kingdom first. What does it achieve? So you see, God's kingdom, let's try to understand it uh, a bit. God's kingdom is defined as God through Christ ruling in our lives here on earth. So that's his kingdom, his rule in our lives, in our heart here on earth and in the world to come. So when we talk about God's kingdom, God's kingdom, that's what we mean. That you are allowing God, the creator of the universe, to rule you in this world freely through Christ. Because through Christ, our sins are forgiven and through him we have access to God. And God also has uh, access to us. So when you put God first in everything, now he will teach you what is important. He will teach you what is really important. Warm your heart. He will provide you with the resources you need for life and godliness. That's what happens. He will provide you with the resources you need for life and godliness. He will lead you to what he thinks is good for you. What God thinks is good for you. He will lead you by his Holy Spirit. We know Romans 8, 14. Those who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. So God will lead you by his Holy Spirit to the things he thinks they are good for you. Uh, David uh, says the same in Psalm 23 that he leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. So the Lord will lead you and guide you. He will teach you, he will lead and guide you. And three, he will prevent the evil one from lead, leading you astray to do what will harm you or what will lead you to hellfire. So when you put God first, he teaches, he leads, he provides resources. And then he also prevents the evil one, evil people, evil spirit from le uh, leading you astray uh, to do that which will harm you or to do that which will uh, lead you to eternal uh, hell, fire and be destroyed. And so in summary, to, be, to put God's kingdom, God's way of life first in everything you do is the right thing and that is how life should be lived to be honest. So when... We are saying put the kingdom first. We are just, you know, telling you to live the life that God really uh, ordained for you before the creation of the world. Uh, the book of Matthew 6, 33, Christ said, put, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness and all other things shall be added to you. Our main text is from Luke 10, 38 to 42. It talks about, Mary and Martha, Mary and Martha, and how one uh, put the kingdom first, and how our Lord Jesus recommended what she did, and that, I think, uh, passage will guide our sermon this very afternoon. Luke chapter 10, verse 38. Please, let's all read together. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman called Martha opened her home to him. So it's always good that you open your home to Christ. Open your life to Jesus. Uh, you know, that is how we have to receive the Lord always into our lives. So Martha opened her home to Christ. 39. She had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be done. She came to Jesus and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, our Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things. But few things are needed. Or indeed, only one. And Mary has chosen what is better. And it will not be taken away from her. So here we see how two women all were happy to receive Christ, but how Mary now puts 
the kingdom first. And Christ was like, Mary has got it, Martha. You are worried and distracted by, by many things. But few things are needed. Indeed, only one. In life, we have the most important things. And then we have the others. Now, if you put God's kingdom first, as we'll be explaining, you, you will realize that you will uh, be led and be thought and be provided for and be guarded against all that is not good. And here, uh, our Lord, uh, a message to Martha, uh, emphasize this very uh, thing that we are looking at. And I'm sure there are many of you, uh, you are so distracted by all kinds of things. And perhaps myself, the same way, and this afternoon is my prayer that the Lord will teach us how we can overcome distractions and indeed apply our lives to what matters most in life. And as we, we, we said in the introduction, if you're able to do that, you'll, you'll really, really be fruitful uh, in many, many things <clears throat> uh, in life. You will have enough time for yourself. Now look at Martha, Mary just sitting down and listening and receiving from heaven. You have time for your family. You have time for the work of God, for your social life. With regards to even your income, you have more uh, money for yourself, your family, for charity, for the work of God, and also to save. Because what the kingdom of God does for us, it teaches us how to live well. So we cut down on prodigal living. We don't spend and waste money uh, out here and there. So even when it comes to you, uh, finance, those of you struggling financially, just put God's kingdom first and, and you will see how your life will be ordered. Those of you who are worried and distracted, put God's kingdom first and you see the difference. Uh, it's not that easy. It requires two main things. Priority, you have to prioritize and you have to be self-disciplined in order to do what we are talking about this very afternoon. So sitting on Jesus Christ's feet like what Mary did signifies readiness to receive his word and the submission to uh to the guidance of it so when mary sat and was listening he was telling she was telling heaven that look i'm ready to receive and to submit my life to the kingdom of god martha on the other hand was providing for if you like the entertainment of christ and those who came uh, with him but they needed food to eat but I said, you have to prioritize. When it, it was the time for the word, our Lord has sat, the Holy Spirit was present, and he was giving the word. You stop everything and listen to the word of God. That's how you put the kingdom first in practice. When it is time for God, all other activities must cease. Then we focus on the Holy God. Because he doesn't just come all the time. So once you sense his presence, once there is that opportunity, you begin to also fall in line. That is how we put God's kingdom first. Uh, many at times, people want God to wait on them. But it should be the opposite. It's you must wait on the Lord. And when God is moving, you must move. So those who are still lagging behind in terms of breakthroughs and issues of life and even their own spirituality, most of them, that has been their prick. They want God to follow them instead of them following the Lord. When God is moving, you move. And when you read the Exodus account, any time that, you know, the Lord will move, the Israelites will just get up and they will follow. When the Lord stops, they will also stop. That is how, as God's children, we do. So you put God's kingdom first in everything. If you like, let me mention the first principle. We've mentioned this years ago. That, that the first fruits, the first born child, everything first belongs to the Lord. So when you wake up, everything first in your life belongs to the Lord. The time, everything uh, you pray, you read the Bible, you meditate upon the Lord before you even do uh, any other thing. Okay, so, so, so to overcome distractions, as I said, two things are needed. Priority and self-discipline. Priority, you have to prioritize. I think uh, I still have some of the books there uh, on, on priority, priorities of life. Uh, I'm sure you all have copies. If you don't have a copy, go to Amazon. You can get a copy and, and, and to read. Priorities of life, setting your priorities to right. Uh, again, we wrote this book, I think, four years ago, that you can get a copy. If you know how to prioritize, uh, you will not be distracted at, at all. You will not be confused. Uh, you will not be busy for nothing. So tonight, this afternoon, what we'll be doing is that we look at at uh, least five uh, things that can distract us. So we'll be looking at distractions of the mind, 
distractions in bad times and bad times if you are not careful you will really be distracted and to give yourself over to all things distractions in good times in good times you must again put god's first prioritize distractions from your enemies your enemies can make you busy and upset for nothing we look at how to overcome that and also distractions from your loved ones your loved ones can also be a source of distractions and so we'll be looking at these uh, one two three five uh, types of distractions. let's first talk about the distractions of, of the mind the book of uh, Isaiah 26 verse 3 Isaiah 26 verse 3 says that say that you will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you God you will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you God will keep your mind in perfect peace if you are steadfast and if you trust in Jehovah, your mind will be stable. Uh, things will not be disturbing you. There won't be any extreme agitation of the mind. So the distractions of the mind happens when a thought or someone has done or that something to you that occupies your mind for a long period of time. That you can't even focus. But for example, prayer. The moment you start to pray, the person's my, uh, a name will come in your in, uh, I mean, I mean, I mean, to mind, and then your prayer uh, pattern is somehow disorganized. Uh, the moment you even hear of the person, you you you, you become upset, uh, or, or, or it could be a thought, a problem, something like that, will just stay in your mind for a long time. You know that can really block your mind from thinking and meditating and looking into other things uh, as well. So this, this is how it happens when someone or a thought occupies your mind for a very long time. So I think elsewhere in the New Testament, uh, Ephesians 5 will encourage us to make sure that we don't become uh, uh, angry, you know, uh, until, till, till, uh, till the following morning. If not, if you go to bed and you are upset and angry, again, distraction of the mind. Uh, will take place so normally the advice is that please be careful what you do or say to people who are close to you don't don't treat people anyhow don't say things anyhow to people for them to be distracted and be confused in their mind it's not a good thing so just be a bit disciplined everyone be a bit disciplined so that whatever you tell people whatever you do to people will not uh, somehow distract them because it's not easy for people to go through that mental agony you know as a result of that be nice to people and try not to cause trouble. Learn to be faithful also in everything uh, you do. Your mind can also be disturbed when you entertain secret things or sins and lust in your heart. So we can also have distractions. If, if we don't focus on the good things of God, but we entertain secret sins in our mind and lust in our heart, then that can also war against the soul. And then there will be distracted. We realize that you are preoccupied with that, with that thing. And most of the time, the only way forward is confession. Confession to Christ. Confession will set you free from that uh, bondage. And also you fill your mind with good things. Fill your mind with good things. Read good stuff. Listen to good uh, messages. And watch good movies that will inspire the, the soul to do well. Uh, anything that will corrupt your soul, you stay away from it. Anything that will corrupt your mind, you stay away from, from it. If not, then you know you are distracting. So, so for me, for example, if you try to tell me negative things about people, most of the time I'm not interested. It's because I just want the mind to be free all the time to focus and to do the many things God wants us to do. Whoever will focus on the Lord steadfastly and trust in him will have peace of mind. Uh, in the book of uh, 1 Peter 4, 7, he says this. The book of 1 Peter 4, 7, uh, he says that the end of all things is near. Therefore, be alert and of sober mind so that you may pray. Be alert and of sober mind so that you can pray. <coughs> uh, so that is the first one we'll touch on. On overcoming distrust. So let's look at distractions in bad times. When life is not good, brother, my sister, 
uh, you must also sit up and be alert. In bad times, you can easily become vulnerable. When things are not going on well the way you want, you can easily become vulnerable. Uh, you can easily lose hope. And the temptation to give yourself over to bad things is very strong. So when things are not going on well, please put God's kingdom first. You will save yourself from a lot of harm. And we'll be looking at the life of David and how he uh, really suffered when life wasn't really good, when he wasn't settled yet in life. You know, he was really going through a lot. And I'm sure most of you will agree with, with me that it takes time for you to settle in life. And even in this end times, I don't even know whether one can ever settle in life. And before chapter 16, uh, 1 Samuel, David was anointed as king of Israel. But for a long period of time, he was not on the throne. And he had to go through quite a lot. And in such time, in that wilderness season, if you are not careful, you can easily give yourself over to that which is not. That's why most people, uh, you know, I, I, I may become depressed and some even suicidal because when life is tough, it's very easy to resign. It's very easy to give yourself over to, uh, I mean, baseless things, things that are not of uh, any uh, uh, good substance. So, so we'll talk about David and see how he managed and how the Lord was with him. So David, David, because of what Saul was doing to him, Saul was really persecuting Saul. Uh, Saul was persecuting David. We know the story very well. And David ran away. He ran and joined the Philistines. So it was it was in that land that you know the people welcomed him. In Israel, Saul said, Whoever will find David, please report wherever David is to me, and I'll give you some big ransom. So no one welcomed David in Israel. And David running and, and going around, he landed himself at the land of the Philistines. They welcomed him so well, they loved him so much. But again, and when war broke out between Israel and the Philistines, David now decided to fight for the Philistines against Israel. Can you believe that? Someone who has been anointed as a king of Israel. And because of the obvious reasons we've mentioned, he wasn't on the throne. He was welcomed by the enemy, his own enemies. David killed Goliath, the champion of the Philistines, right? But after years, the, the same enemy welcomed David. Because his own people rejected him for a time. Now what happened is really, really interesting that I want us to learn some few less lessons, especially when things are not well, how we can all become vulnerable and how we can all give ourselves to that which is not good. Now when that happens, you can be very busy, but busy for nothing because you are not uh, in the position that God has ordained for you. And so uh, let's see what happened. That, so David wanted to join the Philistines to fight against Israel, but God in his own wisdom did not allow that to happen. And let me read that. By the time David and his troops returned to their base, although they did not even go to the war, another enemy had come for David's family and that of his soldiers. Right. So when he joined the wrong camp, you suffer harm. David had to fight a necessary fight to claim his family back. He was very busy, but waste of time because he did not put God's kingdom first. Okay, so let's get the story. Let's go to the book of 1 Samuel. We'll start from chapter 28, and then 1 to 3, then we will jump. 1 Samuel 28, 1 to 3. So we are coming to look at, at how uh, you can be very busy in bad times, but all that you'll be doing is to create problem for yourself. So it's better if life is not that good, it's better you remain calm and be more selective when it comes to what you do than just to make yourself busy because you think you are not doing anything. Okay, so let's go to, I said, uh, 1 Samuel 28, 1 to 3, then we jump to, uh, 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 to chapter 29. Okay, I read 1 Samuel 28, verse 1. In those days, the Philistines gathered their forces to fight against Israel. Archie said to David, you must understand that you and your men will accompany me in the army. David said, then you will see for yourself what your servant can do. Archie replied, very well, I will make you my bodyguard for life. Can you believe that? 
David was an anointed as king of Israel. Now someone wants to make him his security guard for life. Now, when life is not good, if you are not careful, you will give yourself over to anything at all. So just be a bit more careful. There are some positions, some rules, some things, opportunities that will come your way. They are not, they, they are not for you at all. Your right time will come. So, so David, for out of frustration, he said, yes, I will do that. Meanwhile, too, he was a kid. We know he has to live later on. Uh, let's jump to uh, chapter 29. The same first Samuel chapter 29. Uh, let's read from uh, 1 to 3 and 6 to 10. So now everything was set. David had planned to go and fight and kill his own people. When life is tough, you may even go against the church, against God, against the Bible, against Christians. You have to calm down. You have to calm down. So chapter 19 verse 1 uh, and to 3 says that the Philistines gathered all their forces at Aphek, and Israel camped by the spring in Jezreel. As the Philistine rulers marched with their units of hundreds and thousands, David and his men were marching at the rear with uh, ashes. The commanders of the Philistines asked, What about these Hebrews? Actis replied, Is this not David who has, uh, whose officers was uh, sulking of Israel? He has already been with me for over a year, and from the day he left Saul until now, I have found no fault with him. So if you read that verse 4, 5, it says that the people were not happy at all, and they said, please, can you ask them to leave us? Uh, let's jump to uh, verse 6. So 6 says, so actually, that the king called David and he and said to him, as surely as the Lord lives, you have been reliable, and I'll be pleased to have you served with me in the army. From the day you came to me until today, I found no fault with you, but the rulers don't approve of you. Now turn back and go in peace. Do nothing to displease the Philistines. Look at what David said, out of frustration. But what have I done, David asked. What have you found against your servant from the day I came to you until now? Why can't I go and fight against the enemy of my lord, the king? Have you seen that? You can easily fight against your own uh, in terms of frustration. When things are tough, my brothers must just calm down. Just calm down. Because if not, you give your energy, uh, your strength to things that will later on uh, bless you. So God did not allow that to happen. And so David and his men, if you read uh, the, the last verse, that's the verse 11, Says, so David and his men got up early in the morning to go back to the land of the Philistines. And the Philistines went up to Jezreel to uh, fight the Israelites. So they went back. And let's see what happened when they went back. And here is, is a very important message. That, so by the time David and his troops returned to the base, an enemy had come for his family and that of his soldiers. So uh, let's go to chapter 30. Verse 3 to 6. Chapter 30, verse 3 to 6. First Samuel 33 to 6. When you don't prioritize, you suffer a lot of loss. So, say that, verse 3. When David and his men reached Ziglag, they found it destroyed by fire and their wives and sons and daughters taken captives. Ooh. So, David and his men wept aloud until they had no strength left to weep. David's two wives had been captured, Ahinoam of Jezreel and Abigail, the wife of Nabal of Carmel. David was greatly distressed because the men were talking to stoning him. Each one was bitter in spirit because of his sons and daughters, but David found strength in the Lord. Okay, so he wanted to go and do that stupid fight and God did not even allow him. By the time he came, his wives and his children and the whole village have been captured. They were all crying to the Lord. But see, if you know your God, you always do exploit. David found strength in the Lord. And listen to what David said, verse 7. Then David said to, to Abithea, the priest, son of Ahimelech, Bring me the effort. Abithea brought it to him, and David inquired of the Lord, Shall I pursue this raiding party? Will I overtake them? Pursue them, he answered. You will certainly overtake them and succeed in the rescue. So David had to chase them the whole day just to bring his family back. 
the message here is that uh, when, when things are not going on well, my brothers and my sisters, just calm down. Don't just give yourself to anything at all. Just calm down. You'll be fine. If not, before you realize you'll be just undoing some of the things that uh, you shouldn't have, have, have really uh, done. Let's jump to verse 27. So he fought and he fought. He fought the Malachi. And then and then the 27 says that... Uh, no, 17 says that... says that David fought from the dust until the evening of the next day. And none of them got away. Aside 400 young men who rode off on camels and fled. David recovered everything... The Amalekite had taken, including his two wives. Nothing was missing. Young, old, boy or girl, plunder or anything else they had taken. David brought everything back. He took all their flocks and herds and his uh, men drove them ahead of the other lives of saying, this is David's plunder. So simple, David had to fight, but again, unnecessary fight. Brothers and sisters, when life is tough, just calm down. Don't just give yourself to anything at all. You'll be destroying that which... Uh, God has ordained for you. And when that happens, you will even become vulnerable to the real enemy. Because the real enemy is waiting for you to just, you know, at disposition yourself. And then he will strike. Uh, a lot of women, just be careful and be vigilant. Watch over your family. A lot of men, be careful. Watch over your family. Don't be following friends here and there. You know, there are a lot of movement, movements now in the world. Just be very careful. That you don't just join them. Be very careful. The world we live in is in, it is in a very it's in a mess now, and so let's take uh, good lessons from what happened to David. Your time will come. If you cannot do much now, just pray and fast and read the Bible and visit the sick and do li the little good you can. A time will come that you will do so much in life. Myself, I I, I don't rush when 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 when, when things are not going on well. I, I just keep I just wait on the Lord for the Lord to open doors for me. If not, you can't be distracted and giving yourself over to things that will harm you. Let's look at in good times too. In, in good times too, you can't be distracted. But here, uh, earlier on, David did what was right and received blessings from God. When life was good, he thought about God and God also rewarded him handsomely. Let's go to 2 Samuel 7. One, two, three. Second Samuel 7, 1, 2, 3. When life is good, put God first. When life is good, put God first. And David did that. Second Samuel 7, 1, 2, 3. After the king was settled in his palace and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, he said to Nathan the prophet, Here I am living in a house of cedar, while the ark of God remains in a tent. Nathan replied to the king, Whatever you have in mind, go ahead and do for the Lord is with you. David said, I live in a very nice house, but the ark of the Lord is still living in tent. I'll build a house for God. And the rest of the story will tell you that God came in and said, David, you don't do it. But for having such a thought, I'm going to bless you, you and your descendants uh, forever. When life is good, that is how we do. When life is good, don't just be thinking of holidaying and partying. When life is good, that is the time that you must also, all right, let's jump to verse 11, that you must also think about the Lord. And so when life was tough, yes, you could not even express your genuine love because you were all the time crying to God, Lord, Lord, because life was tough. Now that life is good, my sister, put God first and God will also bless you. Verse 11 says that, now God speaking here, it says, and have done says, Ever since the time I appointed leaders over my house, I will also give you rest from all your enemies. Some of the blessings God said he'll give to David. The Lord declares to you that the Lord himself will establish a house for you. When your days are over and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring to succeed you, your own flesh and blood, and I will establish his kingdom. He is the one who will build a house for my name and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I'll be his father and he'll be my son. When he does wrong, I'll punish him with a rod wielded by men and with floggings inflicted by human hands. But my love will never be taken away from him as I took it away from Saul, whom I removed before you. Your house and your kingdom will endure before me. Your throne will be established forever. 
Nathan reported to David all the words of this entire revelation. Then King David went and sat before the Lord and said, he was so grateful, when life is good, put God first. And God will also uh, uh, bless you. That is how life should be done. But in good times, if you don't put God first, the temptation to be proud, arrogant, disrespectful, and prodigal is very strong. Don't forget that the prodigal son messed up when he had resources. So when life is good and you don't prioritize and still put God first, the temptation to be proud, arrogant, disrespectful, and prodigal is very strong. Now, while we are coming to read, David, unfortunately, did not keep up with that attitude. And so he found himself in a very big problem. And there are many of you going through things like that because when life was good, you never took your time to always put God first. So we pray that this sermon will somehow remind all of us that when the Lord gives us rest, we should always put him first. So in peace time, David, as a king, did not go to war with the soldiers. He decided to stay at home. But what happened was that he brought trouble upon himself, which almost cost his life. He committed adultery, killed an innocent man. David had to live with the consequences of that mistake for a long time. The book of uh, 2 Samuel 11, 1 to 5. Let's go there. And when life was good, oh my God, David should have continued. He should have continued, but no. No. So this is what happened. 2 Samuel 11. In the spring, at a time when kings would go off to war, David sent Joab with the king's men and the whole Israelite army. They destroyed the Ammonites and besieged Rabbah. But David remained in Jerusalem. But all the kings that were going to war, David stayed at home. In peace time, everything was okay. Two, one evening David got down from his bed and walked around on the, on the roof of the palace. From the roof, he saw a woman bathing. The woman was very beautiful, and David sent someone to find out about her. The man said, she is Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, and the wife of Uriah, the Hittite. David sent messengers to get her. She came to him and slept with her. Now she was purifying herself from her manly uncleanness. Then she went back home. The woman conceived and sent word to David, saying, I am pregnant, trouble. And as you all know the story, David had to uh, design plots in order to have the woman's wife killed, Uriah killed. And it continued, and it continued, and it continued, and it continued. So he committed that great act. And then David had to live with the consequence of that mistake for a long time. Let's jump to chapter 12, verse 9. Let's jump to chapter 12, verse 9. What we are doing now is to look at how we can avoid distractions in good times. And if you don't want to avoid distractions in good times, David's life is an example that, you know, if you don't, some of the consequences that may come upon you. But we want to avoid all these things and live a good and peaceful life until Jesus comes to rapture us or until we are called to uh, uh, eternity when we turn 70 or 80 or 90. Verse 11. So David has committed this great sin and then the Lord saw it. The Lord sent the prophet Nathan and said, Nathan, go and speak to my servant that I've seen all that he's done. Give him my word. Uh, this is what the prophet said to Nathan. We are reading some of the Revelation verse 11. 2 Samuel 12, 11. This is what the Lord says, Out of your own household, I'm going to bring calamity. Uh, if, 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 uh, let's start from verse 10. Let's start from verse 10. Now, therefore, the, the sword will never depart from your house because you despised me and took the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your own. The sword will never depart from your house. So, the next few chapters we have uh, Ammon raping Tamar, David's own children, incest taking place, and then Absalom getting upset, killed Ammon, and it continued. The sword will never depart from your uh, house. Uh, verse 11. This is what the Lord says, out of your own household, I'm going to bring calamity on you. Before your very eyes, I'll take your wife and give them to one who is close to you. And he will sleep with your wife in broad daylight. 
He did it in secret by I who do this thing in broad daylight before all Israel. 13. David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. Nathan replied, the Lord has taken away your sin. You are not going to die, but because by doing this you have shown utter contempt for the Lord. The son born to you will die. Then he continued, continued, continued. And David had to live with that consequence for the rest of his life. But he learned a great lesson. Brothers and sisters, in good times and in bad times, we must support God first. Because the temptation to stray is very strong. And once you stray, you become very busy, but busy for nothing. Nothing at all. And so may the Lord strengthen all of us, strengthen you, and give you the wisdom to make good decisions. Let's look at the last two. Distractions from your enemies. Distractions from your enemies. I will say that we all have enemies. And if you don't have enemies, it means that you are not important in this world. If you don't have enemy in this world, it's simple. You are not important. Because every important person, man or woman or even animals, they have enemies. So it's, 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 it's normal to have enemies. It's, it's, not, it's not anything new. And, and if Satan has not noticed you, it means you are not important. Yeah, it means that it means that you're, you're on your way to hell already. So if Satan is chasing you, it means that you are very important. Like Job. Satan was so worried about Job. He petitioned God. So don't worry if you have all kinds of dreams and people are doing all kinds of things. You are very important. That is why you have enemies. And we all have them. We have dozens, hundreds. I don't, I don't think I have thousands yet, but it could be. Because I'm very important. Every important person in this world, you have enemies. Now, they can be a distraction, my brothers and sisters. But don't fight them. Don't fight your enemy. Don't, see, those who don't like you, don't fight them. It's a waste of time. If you fight them and you think you win, you don't get anything. And as you fight them, they are wasting your time and, and strength. And they are distracting you. They are blocking your blessings if you do that. They want you to behave badly, to sin against God and miss your blessings. So your enemy always wants to entice you, engage you in fight, to do anything that will make you uh, to lose your integrity before God. Like the case of Job, we know the story. Uh, that was what Satan wanted. So what you have to do is allow God, uh, who is the good guy, to deal with your enemies. Allow God to deal with your enemies. How do you do that? Focus on God and the things that he wants you to do. That is how you respond to your enemies. If not, let's go to Romans 12, 17. Romans 12, 17. Your enemies can be a distraction and all of us, we have enemies and it's normal to have enemies. The evil spirit will never love you. If they love you, it means that you are one of them. And so you just have to know how to engage and the word of God teaches us how to. We will all, and the more God is blessing you, the more you get more uh, enemies. I think on Tuesday we'll be looking at Something I've entitled supporting the people around you, and the reason for that teaching, if the Lord will allow, is because uh, there are many fights these days between husband and wife, between siblings in the church, at uh, the workplace. Instead of supporting and helping each other, uh, too much fight here and there going on. So, so our young men are not shining. The men that God and women that God uh, is raising, they are not shining because of the infighting. And most of them. Are not well equipped they are not strong they are not wise and holy like joseph to endure to the end until what god has ordained for them uh, will come to pass so on tuesday on our relationship and family time we'll be looking at how we can support the people around us what i mean is i don't think about how someone can support but how you can support the people around you but uh, let's talk about this very important topic uh enemies as distractions so Romans 12, 17. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. And here, this text, I think, is for me. It's for me. That for me, every day, I have to constantly remind myself to always do good. No matter what happens, what people do, what people say, constantly. And I think you can also take this uh, verse on board. A constant at your workplace, whatever will happen, just do good, just do good, just do good. 18. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. So don't be the one causing trouble. Live at peace. And the best way is to leave everything to the hands of God. Focus on what God has called you to do. 8. 19. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. So don't take revenge. He did out to you. She did out to you. It's fine. You answer and do good 
uh, in that way you've left everything to the hands of the Lord. 20. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil uh, with good. So, so that is how we overcome distractions from our enemies. They are there and some of you God will bless and you become powerful. Uh, yes, you are going to get more enemies. Yes, they will plot against you. Yes, they will plan if they have witchcraft spirit. They will plan in darkness against you, but the Lord will deliver you. They will do whatever, but you will be set free. But just continue to do good and to, don't take revenge. That is a highway to uh, the kingdom of God. Don't take revenge. If you do that, uh, you allow them to uh, block your blessing. Let's look at the last distraction. Distractions from your loved ones. So who are your true loved ones or friends? So who are your true loved ones? It, it, it's, it's very interesting how Christ defines who uh, is his friend. Or, uh, so let me mention this, that once you become a Christian, now, whoever obeys God and will encourage you to do so is your friend. Very important. So your true friend is someone who obeys God and will encourage you to do that. That is your friend. The rest of them, you are, you are to minister the gospel to them. Very important. And this is our Lord's definition. Now you see our verse, let's go to Luke 8, 19. Luke 8, 19. Your friend is that man, that woman, who obeys God and will encourage you to do so. Luke 8, 19. That is your friend. If the person is not uh, or is, is not obeying God, that person means I have to minister to the person. It, 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 uh, uh, you have to critically engage. It's not someone you can call a friend, according to our, our Lord's definition. Because we are Christians, we follow Jesus, and therefore we take instructions from Christ. Uh, Luke 18, 19 to 21. Now Jesus' mother and brothers came to see him, but they were not able to get near him because of the crowd. Someone told him, your mother and brothers are standing outside wanting to see you. He replied, my mother and brothers are those who hear God's word and put it into practice. That's our Lord's definition. My brothers and my sisters and my mothers are those who hear God's word and put it into practice. So later on, Jude became a follower of Christ. Christ's mother, Mary, also became a follower of Jesus Christ. So now a new spiritual family was formed. So, so these people can also really be distractions as well, which is good that uh, we mentioned. <clears throat> but here we are defining uh, who are your true friends. Now, when the disciples started obeying God, Jesus called uh, them, my friend, John 15, 15. Let's go there. John 15, 15. When the disciples started obeying God, uh, Jesus conferred on them a special uh, kind of friendship. Uh, John 15, 15. Your friends are those who obey God and who encourage you to do so. John 15, 15. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I call you friends. For everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. Okay? So Christ said, I'm not calling my friends, which means I'm, I, I will, I'll show you my secrets. So a friend is someone that you can show secrets. And if, if the person is not obedient to God and that, please be very careful. The reason is that it, it may not be so much about the person but the spirit living in the person very important now if if someone does not have god's spirit in him even that one is so a bit uh, tricky but if the person ha it does not have the holy spirit then then that impure spirit that negative bad spirit can cause the person to do anything at all to harm your vision very important and so and so that is how friendship is the i mean defined uh, in the context of our faith. Uh, in the book of James 2.23, it is said that God called Abraham my friend. After Abraham has worked with him for a long time and has learned to obey the Lord. And so our point here is that even our friends can also be, uh, 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 how do you call it, 
destruction to us? How do we manage it? Uh, let's see um, uh, Matthew uh, 16, uh, 23. So we are looking at how friends can also be a destruction to us and how we have to handle them carefully. So verse 23. Let's start from verse 21. Matthew 16, 21. From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said, this shall never happen to you. 23. Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan, you are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the consents of God, but merely human consent. And so even our loved ones, are, uh, our, our, our people who are close to us can be distracted. So this calls for uh, vigilance. You have to be alert. That whatever anyone says, just, just try to pray over it at least for a few seconds, a minute, before you believe or take on board. Because... It could be that at that very moment, that person is not led by the Holy Spirit to speak, right? So whatever came out from that person may be inspired by that impure spirit or may be inspired by the person's own self-interest. So, so when people are not happy about something, they try to condemn that thing to other people as well. But uh, it, it, it may be that the thing is good, but just that they are not for various reasons. Peter did not want Jesus to die. Just imagine that. But Christ had to die for our sins. You know, you know, we are we are dead in our transgressions and sins, and we need a savior, Christ, to save us. And he must go through the process of death and resurrection before we can receive forgiveness of sins. And here Peter was like, I won't allow you to die. And so Christ, you know, sensing the spirit ministering through Peter, said, You are away from me. Satan, you do not have in mind the things of God. You have not put the interest of the kingdom of God first. You have put your interest first, Peter. So even our, our, our friends, our family members, they can also distract us. But you have to discern and discipline yourself through prayer. And the Lord will show you what to do. And that they may not necessarily be evil people, but hey, at that very moment, perhaps they were led by their own selfish interest, or uh, some foul spirit uh, influenced them to do that. There are a lot of examples in the Bible. Acts 13 would tell us about how that great man <clears throat> was being prevented to hear the gospel by that by Jesus, that false prophet, uh, false sorcerer. Uh, there's no even true sorcerer. That sorcerer. But he was close to the man, and when Paul wanted to preach the gospel to this great man, uh, Paulus, you know, this sorcerer said no, trying to perform magic on Paul, and Paul had to, you know, rebuke, you know, that evil spread in him before this great man heard the gospel, etc. And so, uh, 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 this afternoon, our focus has been very simple: uh, that for us to overcome distractions, we must put the God's kingdom first in everything, in our marriages, at the workplace. Uh, everything that we do, must always think about God's kingdom first. What is it, it, what is it that God wants us to do? Or what is God's will in that situation? That one will get our priority right. And therefore, then, then we have the challenge to discipline ourselves. Because I, I've come to realize it's not enough to know the right thing or to be told the right thing. Sometimes you must discipline yourself to you know, apply yourself to that, which is uh, also good. Let me... In conclusion, mention that some crises are distractions designed to harm you. But I pray that you receive faith from God to overcome them and help other people. This afternoon, during our house fellowship uh, meeting, I uh, will be discussing Mark chapter 4 through Mark 5. How that great storm wanted to kill Christ and the disciples. But if you read chapter 5, Christ was on his way to deliver a man who was possessed by uh, Satan. Satan has taken residence in that man, and Satan knew that Christ was going to deliver that man. So what Satan wanted to do was to first destroy Jesus, so that Jesus would not go and deliver that man. But when our Lord rebuked the storm, the Bible says he rebuked the storm, and the storm became calm. What that meant was that 
when you overcome such crisis, don't panic because the real assignment is waiting for you. There are a lot of you are going through a crisis and don't allow the crisis to wear you out. The crisis is something you must overcome for your own safety, but the real assignment God has given is not for your own protection, but that you go and help a brother or sister out there. So make sure you deal with the crisis calmly and still have energy and grace and anointing to go and deal with the real problem. This afternoon, that will be our focus. That there are some crises, they are designed to harm, to destroy you. Because the enemy knows that you are on your way. God is going to use you to help many and thousands of people. But I pray for you this afternoon. May the Lord, the gracious God, grant you faith and all that you need to overcome. And so remain calm and be smiling and have the grace to go out there and bless the many men and women who... Uh, I need of God's uh, help. So may the Lord this afternoon bless us. And I'm sure the little that God has given us will uh, guide all of us and will help us, equip us to overcome distractions, especially those of you who are troubled mentally, those of you who are confused in life, those of you uh, who are making repeatedly mistakes and just keep correcting yourself. Those of you who are not applying yourself to good things and always you are everywhere, but you are not able to do much in life. Busy for nothing, people. I pray that from today, that will be the end of that story. But that you overcome distractions and you move like Jesus. He spent only 33 and a half years. He finished his assignment on that because why? he overcame distractions. At one point, the people were saying that Christ, everyone is looking for. He said, my brothers and sisters, I must go to the other villages as well to preach there also. Christ overcame distractions. And I pray that will also be our testimony, you and me, uh, this afternoon. Let me say hello, uh, greetings to the few people uh, online and those who want me to uh, say uh, uh, hello. If they can, uh, as usual, once you type something, I will see your name and I will, I will say hello to you and we will uh, receive blessings. So uh, what I can see here... I can see uh, Nina Afrimpoma. Uh, may the Lord God bless you. I can see our brother Eddie uh, again. I may the Lord bless you and strengthen you in Jesus' name. I can also see our Mia Melissa. Uh, God bless and strengthen you. I can also see our, our brother uh, Christopher uh, Kumba. God bless you so much. And then uh, we will keep in touch. Uh, our sister Julia, God bless you in the name of Jesus. Then Jebright, God bless you with your people. Uh, who may the Lord great, uh, uh, grace be upon you abundantly. Uh, also, I can see Sharon Smith. God bless you, Sharon. And Felicia Butre, God bless you, Felicia. I can see Stefano, God bless you. Adwa Sase. God bless you so much. I uh, uh, receive Brian Kofi. God bless you. Paulina Mills. Uh, long time. I think this is the second time I'm seeing you online. God bless you. Uh, Yasmin in Japan. God bless you. Uh, greetings to uh, Jesse and your mom and everyone. And uh, from Emunami Trump. I mean, yeah, God bless you as well. Then our sister Joanna. God bless you, Sister Dwan, Christabel, God bless you, Winifred, praise the Lord, God bless you, Rocky, God bless you, greetings to Lydia, Edward, God bless you, Cecilia, God bless you, greetings to Pastor Francis, uh, Stacy, God bless you, and Johnny and everyone, God bless you, uh, and then uh, Kim, Shanti, Shanta, and the Kunze, God bless you, Madam, and Lauren, God bless you long time. Faith Parsons, God bless you so much. Regina Kwako, God bless you. Then uh, V Owusu, may the Lord bless you. So yeah, we have a few uh, people online today listening. And may the Lord bless and keep and keep all of us safe. And, and again, hopefully by the end of the week, yeah, our brother Lee, God bless you. And your wife, and I think Lisa, yeah, God bless you as well. Bez Ikwe. Equenia, God bless you, Bex. Greetings to uh, Louisa and everyone there. May the Lord bless his faithfulness be upon us. The Lord should keep all of us safe. 
And we pray for greater victories in everything that we will do. Hallelujah. And so those who are not able to show up, again, I send my greetings. And then I put God's blessings upon all of you. May the Lord God bless and keep you safe. Uh, give me the strength to overcome every distraction. Uh, yes, uh, this afternoon we, we will study how Christ had to overcome that storm. That storm did not kill Jesus. And that storm will never kill you. You will overcome it. And then you will go there and help the many people who need uh, the blessings of the Lord. For our God is almighty, is worthy, and we praise him. And very soon, we are crossing God to meet together to worship Elohim. We thank the Lord. Hallelujah. You are holy, Lord. You are holy, Jehovah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. We give you praise and honor. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes. The Lord is holy. The Lord is holy and mighty and powerful. Oh, yes. Thank you, Lord. We worship you. Yes, Lord, we praise your holy name. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Hallelujah. Oh, we thank you, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We glorify your name. Oh, yes. Are you, Lord God Almighty? No, oh, what is the land? Mm, what is the land? Hallelujah. You are holy. You serve the Holy God. You serve the Holy God. You serve the Holy God. Hallelujah. Are you, Lord God? He is the Almighty God, the only one God. The world is a lamb. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ slain for our sins. Oh Lord, help us this afternoon to overcome distractions. Oh yes, Lord. So the peace of God be with you. And we will see ourselves very soon. God bless you. Shalom. Amen.